Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to talk about the actual cost of integrated graphics when it comes to buying an as for Plex Media Server. A number of you, whether it is you're looking at upgrading your existing media server setup or you're on the fence right now, moving away from those cloud services and want to get hold of yourself, a lovely little cheeky NAS to run your own Plex server and glossify your decades of multimedia that you own, a number of you are gonna hear over and over again from different sides of the field that you should or it doesn't matter to go for an integrated graphics CPU. And that's what today's video is about. We have got two NASs here on the table. We have got the DS423 Plus from Synology and we have the DS923 Plus from Synology. A price difference between them of about 100 nicker. This device running on a arguably very old Intel Celeron CPU, the J4125 quad core, and this CPU from 2019-2020 is definitely showing its age in 2024. On the other side of the table, we've got, again, not exactly a brand new CPU in the R1600 Synology. This is a dual core 4 thread 3 CPU that's got a much, much higher base clock speed. It's also got a greater capability, and ultimately, when it comes to raw power under the bonnet, this thing's got a lot more going for it. You might be thinking right now, well, it's 100 quid more, it can do a lot more. Surely that's what I want, and it's got ECC memory as well, take my money. But when it comes to Plex Media Server, not everyone is going to see the benefits of this CPU in their own setup, because this CPU, despite its age, has integrated graphics as an area on board that CPU that is dedicated to the manipulation and handling of graphical data, something that is not available there. So though it doesn't have the same raw power under the bonnet, it does have that tool to hand that does the job better. And when you are looking at multimedia, your 1080p, your 4K, your 8K, not all the devices are to, uh, built equally. Your client devices, your TV, your console, your tablet, your smartphone, your whatever. When you're streaming media remotely, be it because the resolution of the media is too high, be it because the compression technique used to turn a multimedia full-size cinematic experience to the comfort of your living room scale is just too difficult or just not supported by a client device, there are a lot of users that will see the benefits in having uh, integrated graphics on their system because they want to change the shape of that media or need to change the shape of that media on the fly. However, when you run these systems, whether it is you're going to use transcoding uh, and graphical engines at all, it all costs power. It all costs the system having to utilize raw power from the main socket plugged into the wall there and therefore is it going to cost you money so today's video we are going to be conducting 10 to 11 tests on both of these systems we've got them both populated with toshiba 8tb hard drives inside that are designed for server use and in both of these setups we're going to be testing the same 1080p 4k and 8k files with transcoding and native playback and throughout the course of it we're going to monitor how many watts these systems are consuming during those operations and ultimately find out if you are better off getting a NAS that has got raw power under the bonnet to benefit and therefore it can get the job done to transcode that media or are you better off going for a more modest system that has integrated graphics on board and therefore will use less resources to get the job done and therefore consume less power and therefore cost you a bit less money and that's really it let's head over to the screen go for a little bit more of our test setup and begin our tests so here you see on screen the left hand side the ds923 there with that dual core four thread uh, power cpu focus device uh, against the ds423 with integrated graphics straight away just playing the same three megabits per second 1080p file natively immediately we saw that difference of around five to six watts it would fluctuate throughout the course of the testing and as each 30 second file would conclude um it's uh, or buffering we would see that power come down now we saw this repeatedly throughout the course of all of our tests while we were testing a three megabits per second file a 30 megabits per second file and a 100 megabits per second file uh, bitrate all in 1080p and in all three occasions with native playback what we saw was the DS923 consistently having that higher 5 to 7 watt power utilization and later on in the video when we talk about transcoding you will see that number drastically increase but even in these 30 second clips it became very clear to us that the initial um, utilization of CPU for playback was arguably similar look at the uh, CPU bar on each of those um, files there at the top you can see the CPU utilization it's just a tiny little bump it's not huge and it was only 
because it was native playback that therefore the integrated graphics of the DS423 Plus didn't really come into play. And all of these hard drives pushing together was giving it more than enough bandwidth to get the job done. Now with native 4K playback, this is denser media. We're still reading from those hard drives to get all of this multimedia and this is a 60 megabit per second 4K uh, file, uh, otherwise known as Roast Duck. And this file here, again, didn't really tax the systems. Indeed, both of them had similar bumps on the CPU utilization and the power consumption, given that this is ultimately a twice as dense in both file weight and resolution and bit rate to the previous files. We saw that all of the 4K entry um, native playback files that we tested all used, again, that similar benchmark of around 7 watts. I think peaking at around 10 watts difference between that of the Ryzen in the 923 and the older style, and I by older released, J421 inside that of that other CPU there. But native playback across both of them remained largely the same, whether regardless of being 1080p or 4K. However, it was with transcoding, as you might expect, where things really did take a turn for the worse. As you can see, the DS423 uh, Plus there, the utilization of power consumption um, by that quad-core integrated graphics kicking in there settled at around 40 watts consistently, whereas the DS923 started getting to 51, 52, 53 watts. And CPU utilization, if you look at the bar on the top left of the screen, went absolutely cocoa for Cocoa Pops. And the difference between them rose from that steady 7 to 10 watts all the way to 15 and even 16 or 17 watts difference. Now, this is a dense file, a 4K 30 megabit per second HEVC file downgraded to 420p that is no small task but nonetheless this would become kind of the trend moving forward between a non-integrated graphic cpu and an integrated graphic cpu when it came to those conversions and as we transcoded our second file down to 160p another dense file it became very clear that integrated graphics really were the thing that was helping us not use up too much power now this became, and by power I mean electricity, and this, you know, became further still in the case of the jellyfish files at both 200 megabits per second and 400 megabits per second. So that's 750 megabytes and 1.4 gigabytes in size for a 30 second file. Now, in the case of both of them, after 30 seconds of buffering, obviously the power consumption would go down as soon as the task at hand was done. In the case of the 923, due to that lack of integrated graphics, it couldn't even play the file. It was the worst case scenario. So regardless of the two or the 400 megabits per second bit rate that you were going for, in the case of the DS923, if you did have that kind of media that needed to be downgraded, the result would be that you would use more power, pay for electricity, and still not get to watch the file. So focusing on that file density, I decided to make our way over to some 8K file testing. There are several different files that we tested with native playback and one bit of transcoding at the end. And luckily, because we were using an 8K compliant uh, client device, we were able to play these files natively and sweetly. And as you can see straight again, the power consumption difference between them in terms of watts remained at that 7 to 10 watt line, something we grew to respect there and expect all the way through. And integrated graphics weren't really playing their part, even with that 8K media. That CPU was still able to natively play back those files. And again, if you happen to have 8K client devices, of course you're going to be fine. A lot of you watching this are going to wonder, well, what's the point of going for a, a, a more powerful system that the 923 can handle 8K? And you're right, that's fine. If you're running client devices, TVs, multimedia boxes and more, that can handle 8K, and that's the kicker. Ultimately, power consumption, even with 8K media, still remains within those similar boundaries as we saw with HD and 4K, which I found in tremendously um, encouraging for non-integrated graphic, graphic CPUs that Synology seemed to be erring on. This disparity as we went for larger bitrate files did grow a little wider, but not too much wider but it wasn't until we started looking into transcoding where things got damning once again. When we moved onto an 8K file for transcoding, more precisely 30 megabits per second, 8K H.265 transcode down to 1080p at 8 megabits per second, look at the power difference between them. It was around 10 watts, but look at the spike on the CPU utilization on the top left and the top right. Both of them were struggling to manage the bit rate, it has to be said, but 
In the case of both of them, things were clearly going worse on that DS923, with that utilisation just going absolutely cocoa for Cocoa Pops. Power consumption wasn't necessarily as horrendous as we've seen prior, sitting at around the 10 to 12 watts maximum difference between them, but nonetheless, the system was running more efficiently when it was running on that DS423 Plus than it was on the DS923. I still wouldn't call either of these a particularly successful playback, but nonetheless, I think this really did underline the necessity and the utility of that integrated graphics. It was pretty obvious throughout all of our tests that the base level power consumption of running four hard drives simultaneously in that RAID environment was always going to mean that we were sitting somewhere at the 30 to 35 watt or so base level. Both of these systems, regardless of the differences in their CPU architecture and the capabilities of their processors, nevertheless, there was always going to be that base level power consumption because of running those hard drives. We've already done a video on running these systems with SSDs. I don't know if it's live yet, but if it is, I'll direct you to it in the comments. But um, with these two systems, the base level power consumption was always going to be comparable with those drives inside. And it was only when we really tackled transcoding and tackled conversions that we suddenly saw the benefits of that J4125 um, uh, older CPU having that integrated graphics on board. This system CPU here, although it had the cojones to convert a lot of that media, it has to be said that when we were looking at the denser HEVC media, there was just time and time and again examples of the DS93 Plus being a more powerful system that simply either couldn't get the job done or it couldn't maintain pace. It could convert the file, but the time it was spending converting the file was actually longer than the playback organically of per second media. So not only did you have a system that was consuming more power and therefore costing you more to run, but on top of that, sometimes it just couldn't flat play back the media at the same rate as narrative chronological playback. Ultimately, what that means is if you are someone that has got a multimedia collection that is very diverse, and indeed the client devices you're going to be streaming to with you, your friends, your family, or whatever, being very diverse as well, perhaps not supporting the latest compression techniques or codecs, or even resolutions, then chances are you're going to be better served saving yourself about 100 nicker going for the cheaper CPU NAS with integrated graphics and not only saving yourself money on day one, but gradually over time as well. But just keep in mind again, that this is very dependent on whether you are going to take advantage of that integrated graphics. If you're not, you're saving money and actually costing yourself and diminishing uh, the return on investment of your NAS in all the other ways that you can use a NAS in your own network environment for both home and business. And of course, there are, uh, the, uh, there are also advantages to be had with populating these devices with SSDs instead of hard drives. But I'm treading on the toes of the other video, aren't I? You can find out more about that in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know. And if you've got other suggestions for this Plex versus Power Consumption Media series, let me know in the comments below and we'll go through them. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.